Elrose Place was sort of a spin-off of 90210, sort of a planted spin-off. So I was really, I would say, I have a lot of authorship, I would say, the first, you know, writing the scripts, the first 50 episodes of 90210. And then I was really focused in terms of the, my writing was on Melrose Place mm -hmm. after that. Um, and, you know, I always feel like, I, you know, I think part of um, creating a show is the idea that you also get to work with talented people who keep it going. Because, I mean, I, I think you can't, as a, you know, as a writer or an actor, it's tough to be on a show for you know, 300 episodes or 10 years or whatever. So I was very, um, I, was an, I was anxious and excited to create something new and had the opportunity to create Melrose Place, which I um, based, you know, which was inspired by this idea that I lived in my 20s in, a, in an apartment building in West Hollywood where sort of a courtyard apartment building with a pool and everybody that lived there was sort of like in their 20s um, not necessarily um, stabbing each other in the back and having sex with each other, but the idea of this time after college between graduating from college and learning to become an adult. And sort of that was my pitch for Melrose Place. And, and, um, and you know, it was, in fact, I think it suffered from being a spinoff of 90210 because it really had nothing to do with 90210. But I think it was a way to sort of get the audience engaged. But... Our storytelling at the beginning of Melrose Place was very influenced by 90210 in that we were telling close-ended stories with, um, you know, a little bit of, you know, there were kind of morality plays in a way. And, and um, I think I was a little gun-shy about the amount of sex that the characters could have on Melrose Place having just, you know, it was a traumatic experience dealing with sex on 90210. So the, so... I remember at one point, um, I think it was Peter Chernin said, it's okay, those characters can have as much sex as they want. When I heard that, I was like, okay, <laughs> well, now we can have fun. Um, but I think Melrose had a very rocky start because of that, because of its sort of ties to 90210, and it was sort of like, um, it. I kind of brought too much of the DNA of 90210 into Melrose Place, and it wasn't until late into the first season that I, that because the show was kind of like, it, it was really, um, you know, just... Uh, you know, like flailing around in terms of the ratings and everything, it looked like it wasn't going to make it. I thought, okay, I just have to like have a lot of fun with this and um, write a write a show that some people are not going to be able to stop watching. And and at that point, we had Heather Locklear involved, and I think you know having her involved just kind of gave me permission to go into this soapier direction. And I never really thought about writing a soap. I was kind of like a little bit like embarrassed by the idea of, oh no, a soap opera. It's like I never, I mean, I watched them a little bit. I didn't real. I wasn't a big soap fan, but I, I loved the idea of, I mean, really it was just like, we, you know, I wanted to write these shows that, so that people just had, like, couldn't turn away, like almost like watching a car accident every week. They wouldn't know what was going to happen from one minute to the next because I felt like I had had only one last chance to sort of like, grab an audience and so that's sort of how the the storytelling in Melrose Place kind of evolved more really out of a sense of desperation <laughs> and like okay I've got to like kind of you know kind of take these characters from dealing with their you know their issues and their small problems to making the show just like completely fun and and can't be. And I thought, if I'm going to do a soap, I want to do a soap that's like, um, that has a self-awareness about its soapiness. Mm -hmm. And um, and just kind of like go, you know, go all the way with it and do the kind of nighttime soap that I would want to watch. And um, and so that started to work. And then it got to be really fun. I have to say the first, you know, 22 episodes of Melrose Place were a slog. 20 episodes. They were really a slog. And then... Um, once I kind of got over that hump, it became like, it became a blast, actually. 